Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I am going to be sharing with you the two newest Dior Quince added to their line for spring 2022. Super duper, duper, duper excited about this because if you watch my videos, I try out a lot of different Dior eyeshadows and they have an inconsistent formula and then they also have a formula that is top notch, top of the line. I'm really excited because the two Quince that came out are in their top notch formula. So these are ones that hopefully we're not gonna regret like all of the other ones. <laughs> Both of these are limited edition, but from what I can see, they are the same formula that their permanent line is. And it's, it's, it's good. So I made a mistake though. I told you guys that Pink Corolle was one of the new ones. I think, like I knew it wasn't. I picked up the two new ones, but I think I did that because I also picked it up, so it was on the forefront of my mind, but this is the one that I've been wanting, Pink Corolle. Take a look, this is not one of the new ones, but I just wanted to show you the other one that I picked up. It'll probably be in an upcoming haul that I'm going to film, but just so you know, I made a mistake. I know this one wasn't the new one, even though I accidentally told you guys it was, but let's actually talk about the real new ones, right? Let's do that. So the two new ones are Popeline, I looked up how to pronounce this online, I couldn't find it, and Organza. Now, both of these are limited edition and at the moment, I believe are exclusive to Dior, but I'll have the links everywhere they're available right now. These actually are limited edition though, I'm going to believe, because last year their spring quint that came out was Pink Sakura, and this sold out so quickly. I was so thankful that I actually got my hands on this because this is one of my all-time favorite Dior quints, which is why I'm so excited about this year's spring quints since I loved last year so much, and you can't get Pink Sakura anymore. So it really was limited edition, I don't think. <laughs> I don't think they're tricking you. So I ordered both of these, like I said, off of the Dior website. You know where I stand with Dior. Love, love, love ordering off their website because it really is a true luxury experience. You're paying a lot for these, so you might as well get it in a nice Dior box wrapped with a ribbon with a nice expensive sample. That's where I stand with that. But let's go over the new quince. Now, I've reviewed a lot of Dior lately. I just reviewed their Spring 22 collection that I'm wearing right now. Well, some parts of it. I have the lipstick and lip gloss from the collection. I'm wearing the cheek glow sticks, which is why I have that wet appearance on my cheek. Playing with those again. And then I'm even wearing the Skin Glow foundation. So I will link my other Dior reviews that I've done recently because they've launched a lot recently. But these I'm the most excited about. So these palettes are $62 each. At the current moment, they are still available online. And the box that they're going to come in is going to look like this. It's just the typical box that all of their products come in. The palette itself is going to be, I'm going to get a little closer in case you need to read the back. The product is made in France and like all other Dior Quints, it's a six month shelf life. Now, up to you, your prerogative if you choose to discard them six months later. But I've had Dior Quints for a couple of years and they're I wonder why they say it's six months though, because that's really, really short for powder. Now the component they come in, it's just the classic outdated Dior packaging. Really, I think Dior could step this up, you know? We're paying $62 for this little quint. At least make it not plastic, you know? But let's get into it. They also come with these things, you know, sponge tip applicators and brushes. And here is Organza. I'm gonna turn my lights down for this so that you can see a little better. Organza is it's shades of bark and beige. I definitely think it's a little bit more coral than bark and beige, but you can see there's some browner tones in here. As you can see, there are no matte shades in this particular one. And then let me quickly show you Popeline, or however you pronounce it. This one is definitely more my speed. It's this gorgeous little pink quint. It says it's vibrant pink shades and a taupe. I wouldn't necessarily go as far to say as these are vibrant, but they are soft pinks and then you have this nice taupe to compliment. I'm really, really excited about this one. This one screams spring to me, but let's swatch them. So we'll start off with Organza here. So we're gonna start off with this kind of brownish burgundy. Then we have a gold. Then we have this this copper shade and then a taupe shade and then we'll come back for that last shade. Here's how they look on the fingers. This is definitely more for those of you who prefer warm shades. So these are the four. Let me grab the last one. This center shade is more of a satin, I would say. 
kind of a pretty champagne-y pink. These are the five shades. Now don't be alarmed by the swatches. Dior has a specific type of formula where it's not traditional to the popular formulas out there on the market. So just keep that in mind, but these are beautiful. They feel beautiful. They feel like the traditional Dior formula that I love. Okay, but let's go into my favorite one. <laughs> I'm going to show you Hope Line. So we have this pretty shimmery. It looks like it could almost be a topper, right? And then we have this metallic shade. Then we have the taupe. And then this is like a mid-tone rosy pink. Again, there are no mattes in this one. Really beautiful. You can see this one's a little bit more sheer. Do this mid-tone again. The center one is definitely the most vibrant pink, but it actually pulls a lot more icy than in the pan. So here are the five shades in Popeline, and you can see above the organza. Looks really, really soft and pretty. If you're going for something really pigment-packed, Dior shadows really just aren't going to be your cup of tea when it comes to Dior shadows. It's about the glow, the ease of use, and just a really sophisticated look on the eye. You'll see what I mean. Let's get into it. We're going to start off with organza on this eye. I have the Kaleidos tone activator down. This is one of my favorite primers. So taking a look, what I am worried about is a lot of these are within the same depth. So we'll see if we can tell a difference. So I'm starting off with this shade right here and I'm going to apply this to the inner half of my crease. I'm using this E61 brush from Sigma, which is in their new Luxe brush line. This brush line is so soft. I haven't tried them yet but this is the first brush I'm using from the collection for the first time. Just by the feel, they are so soft. It's a beautiful collection that they came out with. I just wish the eye brushes were a bit smaller for us smaller eyed gals. So you'll see that this is kind of more of like a satiny shimmer, just so you can see how a shimmer acts on the crease. I think it's okay. I don't mind it. I'm gonna use the same brush and we're gonna go into this more bright coral shade. So I just wanna see if there's a difference between the two and there definitely is a huge difference, which is good. That means there weren't two redundant shades in this five pan palette because my biggest pet peeve is when, especially when you're limited on the number of shades in a palette, two of the shades or more look all the same because then it's just a waste. So I'm happy that these two are very different and they're applying really great. I am using a fluffier brush but do notice that I'm not getting a ton of depth in this palette which is not a bad thing don't worry okay I'm going to take the E24 from the Sigma collection and let's try out the taupey shade in the corner of the eye just a little bit and I'm patting it right here so I wish this particular shade had a little bit more depth for sure because again it's the same depth level of the other two shades that I applied so it really isn't adding much to this look other than it's a different color. I do wish that one had more depth. I'm going to take the coral shade and I'm running it along my lower lash line. This is an E28 from this collection by Sigma as well. This is really great for a lower lash line color. I'm gonna kind of blow this shade out. You can see I'm really blending. Pro tip, if you get creases under here, can kind of prevent that if you use shadow down there. Okay, and then I'm gonna go back into the taupey shade and I'm just gonna put that a little bit closer to the lash line to neutralize it. So not the depth I was hoping for. Sometimes with these Dior shadows, I feel like they give you more depth than what you would expect from the pan, but not the case with this one. I know this brush looks dirty, but I swear it's clean, it's just stained. So let's try this center color right here. This is a brush from Morphe, by the way, and I'm just applying it to the inner corner and underneath the brow bone. And that's really pretty. I like that. So I'm gonna put it all over the lid. This kind of gives a really pretty soft, glow to the eye, which I really, really like. I think that's gorgeous. Okay. Lastly, we're going to go into, this is more so like the lid toppery shade. I don't know if you guys can see, but it has a little bit more reflex. It's a little bit more softly packed. And we're going to pop this in the center of the lid with our finger. That's the best way to go about this. You can see this is going to add the most dimension to the eye. And I'm going to go back with the brightest coral shade. And I want a little bit more pop, so I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, I wouldn't actually recommend this quad if you're going to get a quad from Dior. It didn't give me much to the eye. Like, it's a soft, pretty, ethereal glow. The shades do kind of blend into one another. There really isn't enough difference between the shades. Let me think about it and let's work on the other eye and I'll come back to you. Let me clean my brushes real quick. Okay, let's go into Papaline. Hopefully I like this one a little bit more than the first one. 
So I'm going to start off with this beautiful blushy rose shade right here and I'm going to apply this all over the crease. I mean, both of these quints are definitely made to be pretty washes of color. If you just want a pretty wash of color across your lid very quickly in the morning, both of these are going to be great, I'm telling you. So if that's your vibe, I think you still will like organza, but that's not exactly my vibe. So that's where personal taste comes into handy. This is a beautiful wash of pink. I really like that. I feel like this would make such a pretty blush. I love any kind of pinky shade. Next, let's go into the taupey shade. I'm gonna kind of repeat the process. It kind of, it's very, very similar to the taupey shade in the other palette, but I think because it's so different from the pink shade, that it actually adds a little bit more than here. Like here you can barely see the brown. I feel like the brown blends seamlessly with the pink, but it still adds to the look. This is very pretty. Okay, wiping off this brush, I'm using my Sigma Switch. And let's see how this shade right here, this one is a little bit more metallic than the other two shades I use, but once you use this on the lower lash line, like I said, this does definitely have more of a metallic finish. Very pretty, I like that. And then let's go back in with the brown. So we want some depth for sure. Just a little bit more. I'm gonna bring a little bit of pink back to the look. Going to take this center shade right here. Let's see how this looks on the eyelid because it looks quite pink on my brush. It pulls a little bit more icy just like it did with the finger swatch, but it still is very pretty. This is kind of like early 2000s frosty eyeshadow vibes. <laughs> I like it though, I think it's pretty. And then we're gonna finish off the lid topper kind of shade. I'm gonna put it all over. Ooh, that's cute. I like that. Now this might just be because I prefer pink eyeshadows, but I much prefer this quint over the organza. Now both quints are very, very shimmery, but I'm going to accept that because they are spring palette and they definitely stay within the same depth. Again, that's very spring-like, very trendy. But let me finish the rest of my makeup and I will be back to give you the final thoughts on these quints. So here's the final look. I just went in with my Fenty Brown Liquid Liner because I I thought brown would complement the colors of both eyeshadow palettes. And I'm gonna finish off with a little bit of a Dior Mineral Peach. This is from their spring collection as well. Really pretty with both of these. But anyways, I didn't love these like I thought I would. Starting off with Organza, this is definitely my least favorite of the two. It's just so light. And the quality in both of these is fine. It is that really great Dior quality that I love. It's a matter of who chose these colors. The color choices in here, I'm just not vibing with it. They're all within the same depth, particularly this one right here. So you can't really tell too much of a difference of each of the shades on your eye. It does not look like a $62 palette is on my eye right here with the organza at all. I'm not in love with the color story here. Yeah. Ugh. Now, purple line, I love a lot more. When it comes to creating a wash all over the lid, this is the kind of color that I would go towards. I don't regret purchasing this one at all. This is one that I actually really, really like. But again, I still do have the same thoughts that I do with Organza in that it's really, really light. So not all of the colors you're able to really differentiate on the eye. It's a lot of money. But if you like that quick everyday wash all over the lid, something bright for spring, I recommend Popeline. I think it's really, really beautiful, but maybe you're more into these corally, neutral, warmy tones that is found in organza, but I'm not really feeling organza, honestly. But I do love the pearlized pink look that I have on my eyelid, but it's up to you if you think that is worth $62. So, unfortunately, um, they're good, but I don't know that I'd recommend either of them really, I would suggest you look at other ones from the line. Soft Cashmere has my heart. It has a strong hold on me. That one's more neutral brown, but Soft Cashmere is my favorite right now from the Quince. And Pink Sakura, which came out last year that you can't get anymore, was so much better. So much better. So anyways. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this review and you found it helpful. Did you guys pick up anything from the Spring 2022 collection? They had a lot, so I'm wearing a lot and I liked a lot of the things, but unfortunately, my expectations I think were a little too high for these and I was kind of let down. But <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.